app. You can always find us, too, on your local Super Talk Mississippi radio station, but you should take it over to Super Talk TV on your computer or your mobile device. You'll see I'm not alone in the studio today. I got lots of folks joining us for a really good thing. The Mississippi Army National Guard and Clinton High School are hosting the first all-state MRE. That's Meals Ready to Eat. Some of you already knew what that meant. A cook-off coming up this week, and I think it's pretty cool. So joining us is Staff Sergeant Constanzio. Did I get it right? Yep. Yes, ma'am. And then I got Chef Bruce, who's joining us from Clinton High School, and I've got Lieutenant Colonel Andrew Adcott with the Battalion Commander of the Mississippi Army National Guard Recruiting Retention. Y'all have the longest <laughs> introductions, <laughs> but we got those over with. I think this is super cool. So I don't know who to sort of hit it off to first. Maybe you, Colonel Adcott, on how did this get started? Started. Sure. Well, first off, Rebecca, thank you for having mm-hmm. us. It's an honor to be here. Uh, so this started off probably over a year ago, um, really, with some of our recruiters that were out in the high schools in the state working with some of the culinary arts programs. And, and it was really a discussion that came up, and it really came to fruition through Clinton High School here in the area. But how do we reach today's youth and show them the applicability of what they are doing in school and how it could relate to future military service. So that's really where where this event started. And uh, on Thursday, uh, uh, we will unveil uh, really our first of hopefully many uh, of these cooking competitions. Um, And I know you mentioned, Rebecca, that it was a meal ready to eat. We're actually cooking what the Army refers Ah. to as a UGR. Okay, so it got different names to it. Right, so this ration, it's a unitized group ration, and it feeds about 50 service members, um, typically in a deployed theater, um, portable, easy to make, um, and and really helps to give sustenance to our troops out in the battlefield uh, that wouldn't have access to quality food any other way. And I would say any of our servicemen and women listening to good things that may or have been retired, you guys, when y'all hear MREs, you think, oh, but they've come a long way. I do believe that they have over the last several decades for sure. Okay, Chef Bruce, when this idea got brought to you, oh, I mean, what did you think? Did you, were you ready for the challenge? Were you excited about it? Yes. Well, um, we've been working with Constancia for years, putting on the smaller version of this, which was our MRE competition, where students were able to choose from all the different MRE kits. Um, They were on teams of four. They were able to take those kits and plan ahead of time by adding 10 additional ingredients to the kits, Um, things like fresh produce and herbs, things that would just raise the bar a little bit to make them uh, a little more you know, interesting. Yeah. Um, and so they would cook these three course meals with a appetizer, entree, and dessert, and uh, optional beverage. So for three years now, we've been doing that competition. Um, and it's a one day competition with our level two students where they have 60 minutes to prepare these dishes. And it's amazing to see what they come up with from these vacuum sealed MRE kits. Um, and so from that, this new competition has grown uh, and we're able to offer it statewide um, and just on a bigger scale. So. What are you? Are you always surprised what the kids make with the with the foods? Yes, ma'am, I absolutely am. Um, one of my favorites is the cheese tortellini, and one yes. one group took it and made. I, I don't even remember what it's called, but it blew my mind. You would you would be fine eating it if, if you, you had took, to. If yeah. you took a um, a tortilla and turned it into something edible, those of you listening would understand. It just it would blow your mind too. Well, and I think that's cool, too. I mean, it's giving the children uh, or the students, I should say, a challenge and something that they're already learning with. With Chef Bruce, I think it's really interesting that you guys have a culinary program there that's robust enough that the Army National Guard can sort of come in and partner. So when this isn't going on, give us a little idea what the students are getting the opportunity to do on a daily basis regardless. Sure. Well, um, culinary arts now in high school is the former home ec. So they've taken it and just raised the bar. So now we're preparing these students for the industry. So they leave not just knowing how to make cookies and crack eggs, but they're fully certified. Um, We work with the National Restaurant Association for our curriculum. And so they leave not just um, with skills and knowledge, but fully certified um, with the Serve Safe certification on a manager level. So they're able to go straight into the uh, industry. And I tell them it's their golden ticket. They can walk into a job interview and not just get a, you know, job as a busboy or waitress, but they can jump in at a managerial level, which for high school students, you know, 
instant uh, incentive to, to do that. So uh, we have level one, two, and three at Clinton High School. Um, level one, of course, is first year, level two, and then level three are our interns. So those are third year interns that are uh, mentors, leaders, and make up our competition teams. So, so uh, Colonel Icott, where you mentioned that this was hoping to get the students interested in maybe military service, and often you don't think of cooking as part of the military service. So how are you guys like uh, bridging that gap with the kids to say, hey, these skills have a place with serving your country? Right. No. So, Rebecca, so I guess first I, I would remind listeners if they, if they don't know this already, so in the Mississippi National Guard, We have about 10,000 soldiers on the Army side. On the air side, we have about 2,500. So I'll speak to the Army side. Within that group, we have a a, a military occupational specialty called a 92 Golf, and that's a culinary specialist in the Army, uh, also known as a cook, right? Um, So so really the, the, the idea is to introduce the youth to what that MOS actually does in the Army uh, and how it makes a critical difference for soldiers on the battlefield and in natural disaster areas uh, 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 to to maintain their strength to continue their mission, right? Uh, So we want to show that. And one way that we're going to show it on Thursday is actually have currently serving Army National Guard soldiers there with the students assisting them in the operation of the equipment in what we call a CK, a containerized kitchen that's tactical and mobile. It's about 20 feet long, um, and the teams will actually compete uh, and prepare their dishes in that Army asset. Uh, So they get the full immersion experience of having an experienced soldier, man and woman, We, we to have both genders that serve as 92 Gauls there with them to show them what that would actually mean uh, to serve. Um, in a tactical environment, one of those 20-foot trailers could feed up to 800 soldiers three times a day in one trailer. So uh, I think they'll get to see the importance of that. That's a new term for pop-up kitchen, right, Chef Bruce? Like, yes. I was just thinking you have all these pop-up restaurants, but it's not necessarily tactical sort of feel in that way. But it sounds like you're also adding in that element of just having to be prepared and working with what you got or wherever you may end up. So have you have you seen this setup yet? Have you had the opportunity to then prepare your students for it, Chef Bruce? Yes. So last year during our MRE competition, uh, they were able to bring one of these units in, and our students were able to walk through and tour it. Um, for the other teams competing, we were able to send out a pamphlet that shows all of the equipment that will be included in, um, such as knives, whisks, cutting board, you know, what it comes equipped with so they know what additional items to bring with them. So now you created this cook-off, or you are you're the mastermind behind at least some of the cook-offs. How yes, excited ma'am. are you to see what these kids can do with, with what, what comes to the table? I'm beyond words, honestly. I, I think I've said more than enough this week that I'm so beyond excited and I've talked to a lot of the students and hyped them up and uh, one of the best things about being able to do this as a recruiter is allowing these young men and women who are in the industry to serve because being in the culinary arts it's service you're serving stomachs really Um, but allowing to see that should a natural disaster happen we need to be able to cook for our people and those that are out there, you know, during Katrina or even in in uh, tornado situations or things like that. These CKs can go to those locations and these culinary specialists or cooks are able to then cook and serve for those local areas. So. Which I think is important, and I also think that it goes to show those that may be thinking about getting into service. Like Darren and Jackson said um, on our text line, he said, I said, cool, when I mentioned MREs. And he said, that is not what comes to mind. Again, those from a a different generation, our veterans, may not have the best thoughts and feelings about chow or MREs. So, Colonel Adcott, this also is showing students that, hey, you know, it's not as bad, you know, I guess um, things have elevated in terms of the food that you get if you're on deployment or the food that you get when you're serving um, your country. Yeah, so... Which uh, is not a bad thing to want better food. (laughs) No, it's not. And and I will tell you, traditionally, a service member, if if they're subsisting or eating a UGRA, uh, they are typically in a... uh, 
little bit more of a, a stable situation. They are not um, on foot typically. That That's going to be the MRE that they're carrying, uh, the UGRA obviously requiring the, the heating element uh, to it. So if they're eating a UGRA, life is getting better uh, for that service member. So Well, I think this is cool. We want to keep up with who wins, so how can we do that? Yeah, so the events on Thursday um, – Really, uh, I'll let Sergeant Constantio talk about the, the how to get there. Uh, if they can't attend, they can also see us on sh- social media where we will run video right. and pictures. We'll get to all that and more coming up next. TV. We are continuing our conversation with the Mississippi Air National Guard, and they have partnered with Clinton and High School. They're hosting the first all-state UGRA group ration cook-off, which I think is super excited, coming up this week. we got 10 schools from all over the state coming. This is Sergeant Constanzio's um, sort of baby, sort of thinking of it. You're loving seeing it come together. So tell us a little bit more details of how everything's going to work coming up on uh, Thursday. Um, so first, I uh, would like to just kind of talk about the teams, the schools mm-hmm. that will be coming. Um, Of course, Clinton will be there uh, with their teams, Brandon High School, Ridgeland High School, the Warren Hines Career Technical Center uh, will be there as well during the morning flight, the Hattiesburg High School, Hancock County Career Technical Center, George County High School, Oxford High School, and Oak Grove High School. They will be the schools attending. So how did they get selected or did they opt in? They opt in. So it was put out a few months ago when we were in the planning stages that any school can attend. So we gave them a link to register and that would allow them to come and be a part. So will they have seen these UGRAs prior to Thursday or is this yes. new for everybody? So, so they've been given? Yes, they have. They received a UGRA, which Chef Bruce will kind of go into Mm -hmm. detail about the contents um, in January and then come Thursday that same UGRA will be in the containerized kitchen for them to get ready to will all 10 be cooking like got an hour to cook or two hours to cook or whatever so how to work all right so um, I would also while I kind of explain the progression of things I would like to invite all of the listeners um, on behalf of the Mississippi Army National Guard to experience this first annual state cook-off. It is hosted by none other than the Clinton Public Schools. The Culinary Arts Program and Chef Bruce have paved the way for the students across the state to experience the level of creative culinary genius. To see the first flight of the students, which are more your local schools, that will happen between 1030 and 11, where judging will be at 12, or between 11 and 12. Mm -hmm. Um, After that, the second flight will then cook between between one and two with judging at to where awards will be at 4 p.m. and uh, where anybody can join. I'm excited to see the state, you know, in action, but as always, what does it win? go arrows. Um, <laughs> go, so, dogs. go arrows. <clears throat> <laughs> uh, what do they win, though? Um, they will win anything um, anywhere between uh, kitchen aids, uh, hydroponic gardens, towers. How do you say? Oh, towers. Yes. Um, um, immersion blender. Immersion blender. <laughs> that was a word I couldn't say. So, <laughs> Chef Bruce, act, Bruce actually knows a little bit more yeah, about no. what the winnings are because she is competing. I just get to watch. She knows what her team is going <laughs> up for. <laughs> and you also know what's in this. So, when you hear UGRA, you, and, you know, and I had mentioned MREs, what Jeff and Ponatok said, they were better than the C rations. So, we're just moving on up when it comes to the food Absolutely. in the military. Um, were you shocked at what was actually in there in terms of quality of food? Yes, it is a very inclusive kit. It has anything you would need to put something like this together. Um, the main dish is chicken cordon bleu. So it's a frozen chicken breast filled with the ham, Swiss, and um, a cheese sauce of some sort in the middle. Um, and those are individually frozen. It also came with a frozen red velvet cake that the students can play with and turn into something fabulous. Um, it has some canned green beans, um, potato flakes as kind of your starch and veg. Then it has a lot of other just random uh, drink mixes, dried coffee, dehydrated coffee, um, a can of sweetened condensed milk. So there's things in there they can play with to elevate the rest of the meal and do things with. Will they be given um, ingredients outside of that to get creative with, or is it just what comes in that? Yes. So the students are allowed to use 10 additional items. That could either be ingredients or that could be additional equipment. So if they need a blender, an immersion blender, um, a, a special device they need for their piece. If they want to use special plates to plate it on, that can be one of the 10 ingredients they can bring. Um, so they have to think ahead about what is most important. Is it you know, 
fresh produce or is it the way they're going to plate it and have some interesting looking platter to put it Who's on? Who's judging this? <laughs> so we actually have uh, two local judges, which Chef Bruce can um, – speak to because she was able to you can't in. judge no not me no, no I, not I her <laughs> i was with party foul <laughs> um and we have three of our military culinary specialists that will be there so the two local judges are ira vaughn from half shell oyster house in flowood and beth hennington who is known as the cookie lady she's the vanillin she uh, won a food network uh, competition for her cookies so she will be judging more of the desserts whereas chef vaughn will be judging more of the culinary side so, so it should be a good time. Colonel Alcott, how excited are you to just sort of see the community get more involved and get better understanding about all the different ways um, to be a part of the National Guard? I, it, it's hard to even explain, uh, Rebecca. So, you know, in today's day and age, people hear about the military uh, either from friends and family members. Maybe they see it on the internet and they see it on social media. But what I would encourage is forget what you've heard. Come see it. Come see what actually happens in person. Come see your fellow citizens of Mississippi and, and, and what they're doing for this state and country, um, particularly veterans. You know, we're, we're, we're watching the text line and we're seeing veterans talk about their experiences, right? Well, I would encourage them, come see what today's service member uh, uh, is subsisting of on the battlefield. Um, and, and I think they will come away uh, uh, with an appreciation both for their service and where we are going as a military. Um, and, and finally, I would say that, you know, for many of our students, they, they may not end up pursuing culinary uh, 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 aspirations post high school, right? Um, but we want to show them the opportunities that are out there, possibly even beyond that, um, and all the benefits of service that, that that come with it. So, but I also think too, if you got a student who is interested in culinary, but maybe they just don't want to go the drive route of your normal sort of hospitality uh, trajectory that can be a grind and its own sort of animal. You can talk <laughs> about, you know, Chef Bruce, or you know, but the, but likes the idea of being able to be connected to a community, something greater than themselves, is with the military, getting to travel, have all the benefits of assault, you know, all the things like that. This may be the first time they're hearing. You mean I can take my love of cooking and also serve my country and there's a lot of different uh, areas within the in the guard that's not just your standard you would think run-of-the-mill type soldier not that there's anything wrong with that you know to that point Rebecca I I would tell listeners to remember that that service in the National Guard typically means a part-time job with full-time benefits um, that they can pursue their aspirations in the civilian sector and culinary and, and other areas and still serve in the military so they really can have the benefits of both worlds. I agree. Do you get to taste test at least? This was your baby. Yes, I absolutely will. I'm 100%. <laughs> There's, there will be a taste testing table. So those who do come and would like, especially veterans, if they do arrive, they will have the opportunity to see what these students just put on the plate. You mentioned, too, there's ways to watch if you can't come or right. stay connected. Right. So uh, I think I'd turn it over to Chef Bruce, yep. I believe, has a live Yes. Stream yes, we are on Instagram at chs.culinaryarts, so you can find us there, and I'll be live streaming the event and posting pictures the whole day, um, as well as you guys. Right, and we'll have it on our social media stream at MS Army Guard as well. And uh, Chef Bruce, this would be the second time you could come away with a potential win within less than a week. So <laughs> at the Salvation Army Super Bowl this past Sunday, Clinton High School came away with the win. What yes. soup did uh, tell us? Uh, what soup did your students do? Yes, so we had our level one tenth grade students make a white chicken chili. That's our famous recipe. That's um, actually won several other competitions too. Um, it's quite delicious. And um, yeah, Walt Grayson was serving it for us, and we came away with the win. And the students were thrilled. We were very thankful. Well, I got to taste it. It was delicious. It wasn't as good as the Sal and Phil's gumbo. <laughs> I just feel like somebody persuaded them. I'm totally kidding. <laughs> There's, you know, it's always just that little bit of friendly competition, oh, sort of, uh, for sure. So how many students is on a team? That's one thing. That uh, get four, to... Yes, four to five students will be on a team. So So y'all have, what, 40, 50 students Mm -hmm. sort of headed to Mm -hmm. this way coming up, um, coming up Thursday. Um, Any last thoughts uh, that you would like for folks to know about what's happening Thursday? Just finally seeing what these students can do in another venue, because I know that 
they go to these competitions all the time, but now they're taking it to the next level. I think our first year, we <laughs> they went to Disney, and I said, if you can cook an MRE like this, there's no reason why you shouldn't take first place. And they went and took first place. <laughs> so. <laughs> So, so How yeah. long have you been running that culinary department? <laughs> I've been there five years, and it is the greatest job ever. Uh, it's a really amazing opportunity. Does that also remind us parents that they can do more in the kitchen than we give them credit Absolutely. for at these particular Absolutely. ages? Absolutely. It's yeah. amazing. To see they can they do, do more than heat up Pop-Tarts or <laughs> Hot Pockets or whatever it is. Yes. Yes. They can serve our military men yes. and women. So this is awesome. Okay, so you guys will have it streaming at? That's right. M- MS Army Guard will probably have static photos there, and then the live stream will be on Clinton. At CA. Arts on Instagram. Go dogs. <laughs> As always, go air it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you guys for your time and your service. And then you guys stick with us. We got more for you up next. Thanks.